today we're going to talk about adjunctions. Adjunctions describe a relationship between a pair of categories involving a pair of functors and a pair of natural transformations. Now, here's the situation that we're going to have. This isn't the formal definition yet, this is just the idea behind it. We've got, if we've got a pair of categories C and D, we like to think about ways of comparing them. And as category theorists, we like to think about things a bit more interesting than equality. Equality is a very um, rigorous and not very imaginative form of sameness. Do I mean imaginative? Well, I've well, never said it now. And we now know that we can have something a bit more um, forgiving, which is called isomorphism. And when the two things that we're comparing are categories, then we can have something even more lenient, which is the notion of equivalence. Well, adjunctions are even more lenient than that. They're not really saying that the two categories are the same as such, so much as that there's a rather interesting relationship between them. So, just like with isomorphisms, we're going to describe this by means of a functor going this way and a functor going that way. We're going to call this one F, and we're going to call this one G. And let's just, let's just think a little bit about what kind of relationships we can have described by these functors going in opposite directions. So the first thing we can think about is the notion of isomorphism, which says if you go there and come back again, you get back to exactly where you started. Uh, so going there and coming back again is GF, because that's the way I write the composition. And it's saying that it's the same as just sitting where you started the identity functor on C. But also, you can say that if you start over there, come here and go back again, you get back to where you started as well. So that's saying that FG equals 1D. You might be wondering why I've written it this funny way around with the identity on the left here and the identity on the right here. And of course, secretly, that's because I know what's coming later. But anyway, equivalence of categories is a bit like isomorphism up to isomorphism because we're saying if you go there and you come back, you don't land exactly where you started, but you just land somewhere isomorphic to where you started. So equivalence is where GF isn't equal to the identity, but it's isomorphic to it, and FG isn't equal to the identity, but it's isomorphic to it. So finally, we can think about a junction where we have something even weaker than this. We don't have isomorphisms like this, but we just have a uh, natural transformation here and a uh, natural transformation here. But that is the idea of an adjunction. We have a uh, natural transformation in this direction, which is going to be called the unit, and a uh, natural transformation in this direction. The directions here are very important, and now we can see why I wrote the the unit on this side here and the unit on this side here all that time ago. Of course, when we specify natural transformations like this, they can't just be any old natural transformations. We do, oh, that's supposed to be an isomorphism sign. Um, we do, in fact, want to be able to manipulate these a bit as if they were, uh, were more rigid notions of sameness. We still want it to be useful. Um, and in order for it to be sufficiently useful, we need to impose some axioms on this, as you might expect. You can now test yourself to see how much of a hardened category theorist you are by seeing if you can work out all by yourself what the obvious axioms are here. Try that now. Okay, if you haven't been able to do it yet, I will now tell you what they are. I'm trying to wipe the board a bit more vigorously now, so I don't leave remnants behind. Is that better? Okay, good. Uh, right. So there is a no, there is some very um, strong directionality going on here. We're going to talk about f being left adjoint to g, which we'll write like this. I'll say more about the left and rightness later. This notation shows, with this little turnstile thing, that the f is the left adjoint and the g is the right adjoint. And here's the definition. And a junction of f left adjoint to g is given by, I've got a grammatical problem, have I? Because I haven't said what these functors are. Well, given functors like this, given functors like that, an adjunction f left adjoint to g is given by a pair of natural transformations. natural transformations, traditionally called eta, which is the one that goes from the identity on C to GF, 
and epsilon, which is from FG to the identity on D. Now, I'll tell you a secret, which is that if I ever write an adjunction that isn't F and G, I can't work out what's going on, and I have to translate in my head to F and G, and that's the only way I can remember it. Okay, don't turn on I said that. Right, so what are the axioms? When you're trying to work out what the obvious axioms are in category theory, you have to look at how your pieces of data interact in two possible different ways. So, for example, let's have a look at starting with an F. Now, if we started with an F, we could sort of insert a GF. This is what this is about, which is incidentally called the unit. What the unit is about is inserting a GF. And what the co-unit, this is called the co-unit, not count it. Um, this is about removing an FG. And so if we start with an F, we can insert a GF on the right. We couldn't insert it on the left because that would have given us something non-composable. Um, and now we do that with F eta. And once we've done that, oh look, there's an FG that we can remove on the left. And so we do that by using an epsilon on the left. And we get back to F. But there was something else we could do, which was just sit on our F and not go anywhere. So that's the identity on F. And that's supposed to commute. Now, uh, dually, and I'll explain what I mean by dually in a second, or maybe in an hour, um, there's, you can start with G, and once you've started with G, you can now insert your FG, your GF on the other side. So you can insert GF on the left, ah, uh, which says eta, do eta G, and now, look, you've got an FG that you can try and remove on the right, and that should be the same as just sitting on G and staying as you were. So those are the two axioms. These are often called the triangle identities because, well, they're triangles. Um, and that is the definition of an um, adjunction. That, I've spelled identity completely wrong. That's better. Uh, just in case you're not very comfortable with diagrams of natural transformations, I'll show you how these work as diagrams on components. Because, of course, this is just the commutativity of some components in the uh, underlying category. So at x, we're saying for all x in C, we've got f at f of eta of x, gf, gf, x, epsilon f has its component at x being the component of epsilon at f of x. Here we've got 1 on f of x and f of x. So here we're going to say for all y in D, this is what's got to commute. The, the component of, of eta at g of f of uh, y, g of f y, g of eta of y, uh, and g y. Now, there is another way of thinking about these, if you happen to like two categories and diagrams of two cells, because you can write eta and epsilon actually as two cells. So here's eta, that's f and that's g, here's 1 as an actual two cell, and here's epsilon as an actual two cell, Da -da 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 hopefully I got those the right way around, in which case the first triangle identity says what? It says this. Da -da 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 -da. Here's eta and here's epsilon. It's supposed to be equal to 1 as a diagram of two cells. And the second one is saying da -da 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 and there's, uh, there's epsilon and there's eta. So that's an alternative way. That's the two categorical notation for writing these things down. There's an eta or epsilon one. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is supposed to be an eta. You're supposed to look at the shape of the diagrams, not the actual label that I absentmindedly wrote in the middle of it. So the reason I like these is because they're very geometrically vivid. There's only, you, there's only one thing you can do to stick these together this way, and there's another thing you can do that way, and then it should be completely unambiguous. Um, is there anything else I'm going to say now? Well, there are only 38 seconds left, so I think I'll leave it there.